What if I told you you could get a golf club with all the performance of a Titleist, a Callaway, or even a TaylorMade for less than half the price? That's exactly what we are going to do in this video, so don't go anywhere. You see, in this video, I have the Wilson Launchpad Fairway Wood, and this could be the perfect fairway wood for the majority of golfers. The reason for that, who wants to hit high bombing draws with their fairway wood? You'll see here, this has draw bias, and it is £189 depending where you go, as opposed to up to £300 depending where you go for a Titleist, TaylorMade, or Callaway. Now, what better place to test this than here at Desert Springs, home of the European Tour qualifying school in just a few weeks' time? We're gonna take on a few holes, guys. We're gonna test this Wilson Launchpad fairway wood for numbers, and we're also gonna see, should you put it in your bag if you want to hit high bombing draws? So don't go anywhere. Now the beauty about this first hole is out of bound right, wind off the left. So going to use that draw bias. You can see there's quite a lot of offset on this club. Going to aim just up the right side. Let that natural offset bring it back. Hopefully that should do the job for us. Absolutely perfect. This is going to be rather interesting. So not a bad drive in there, guys. And you can see we've not actually got much run either. So it's pitched here and just kind of finished on the left side of the fairway. This is a par five and we have 255 yards in. So around about the right distance for a three wood. Again, wind off the right. Now, what makes this LP so special? So it does have an ultra lightweight design. It also features, get ready for this, a Carpenter Custom 455 face, of which I have no idea what that means, but it sounds really interesting, although it's not made of wood. Car Carpentry is wood, I don't know. Anyway, guys, let's see if we can knock this anywhere near this green. Quite a difficult opening hole for the guys at Tor School. I can't imagine there's going to be many Wilson launch pads in the field. Right. I just feel so confident to aim out to the right and it come back in. So maybe it's not just for the slicers out there. Oh, that's just gone left on me. Ah, oh, James, that one's travelling. Might be okay, let's see where that's finished. That is the one problem, I think, if you don't hit a slice, if you don't get that swing path out to the right and the club face slightly open to start the ball right, that a uh, draw bias is certainly going to turn over on you. Right, not the best shot there. We are quite well short. The wind took that definitely. I mean, if you look at the way this wind is going, it is straight that way. That club isn't ideal for this. I'm gonna try and hit a fade with this. I'm even gonna try and hit a massive block slice into some houses in just a second. So you definitely wanna see that. Will this club rescue us? Because that generally is who the club's designed for. Let's see if we can just kind of salvage a birdie even with that nasty second shot. Delightful. So for that slightly cheaper price, we've spoken about what you do get. You get that ultra lightweight technology, you get that Carpenter custom face. You also get a lower CG and slight offset as we've already discovered. But what don't you get? So you don't get adjustability. You'll see there's no adjustability on that hosel. There's no weighting that you can change. And you don't get that kind of big brand name. You don't get the Titleist, the TaylorMade, the Callaway, the Mizuno. But you do get the name of Wilson, who actually has won more major championships than any other brand for the last thousand years or something like that. Um, don't quote me on that. Let's see if we can play a fade with this. Let's see how just how versatile it is. And guys, towards the end of this video, we are going to jump in the simulator and test it against my Titleist TSR3 and see what the numbers do dictate for the extra price. Okay, so how well can I control this club face? I've just noticed as well, it also has 16 degrees of loft there as opposed to the standard 15 you would see on three wood. It's called launch pad for a reason. And I must say one thing that I haven't struggled with is getting this thing off the floor, even with not the best of strikes. I'm gonna aim down the left. We are straight downwind, so the wind shouldn't be too much of a factor and I should be able to just move it back. I mean, if it, if it takes out the right hand side of the golf course, it's perfect for 90% of golfers, isn't it? Oh, I've hit that so good. It's just fading back. It might still well be in the rough. That's just bouncing to the way for us quite nicely. I must admit, if I could have that as a stock shot for a tee, I would be absolutely over the moon. That was never going right. Uh, I had to hold it off a bit to not go left, but I don't particularly mind that too much. Not with a launch pad. So we've just missed the fairway there, but you can see that it's sat up like a peach, 
and we have 279 yards. This is basically like having it on a tee again. We are downwind. This is where the launch pad is really going to help me. We're also going to play a shot into the wind on the next hole and see just what the difference is. Because if you play a windy golf course, some, this might not be that good for you unless you're downwind and you want to try and hit it 279 yards. I would be amazed if we still got there, to be honest, because that is basically like a driver for me. But with 16 degrees of loft and all that technology, we've got every chance. Where is my glove? Now, just as we wait for this green to clear, I'm just going to tell you just how good I think this looks. I love that lime green outline that just kind of shows you how big the head is. That gives you loads of confidence. And I also love this little mark here in the middle. I love how it's just nice and subtle, not like big kind of half moons and turbulators and things like that. Some of the nonsense that you see on other golf clubs, mentioning no names. Keep it nice and simple on top. That's what people want. You don't want a big painting on top. Right, I'm going to play for a draw because that's basically what's going to get me the most distance. I'm going to go before that van goes as well, because I just thought I'd give myself a bit of a head start here. I'm really worried it's going to go left and I'm going to hit those people. <laughs> oh my God, that is so good. Look how straight that is. Go! Oh, it's front edge. 279. That never moved in the air and it was front edge. Look how middle that was as well. Guys, is this perfect for almost everyone? Because a good golfer knows how to be more artistic with it. But the golfer who hits it right, it isn't gonna go right. Everyone's winning. So two difficult par fives. We haven't hit any of them in two, but I wouldn't really expect to having played a three wood off the tee and then a three wood for the second shot. It's kind of an oxymoron because if you're gonna go for it in two, you'd probably hit driver and wouldn't have a three wood left in. But looking where that's finished, that's a much better shot than on the first hole. It's just short. We've found this little gap because we managed to hit it nice and straight. Can we try and get up and down for a birdie? The flag's tucked away horribly, so it's not gonna be an easy shot, but it's a much easier shot than we were left with at the first hole. Can't wait to turn around and hit this into the wind. If I can play this down and get it kind of running down the fairway, it could be the best club for everyone. Get up that bank and go. Oh, that slipped away. Guys, that is another par. Let's turn around into the gale force wind and see if we can play this Wilson LP fairway wood down and straight. Now, this is in no way me over-exaggerating, but this is the most difficult fairway to hit in the world of golf, bar none. Sort of. Especially when you factor in just how narrow this fairway is, how long the hole is, and the fact we are into the wind slightly off the right. So if you struggle with a left shot like I do, this isn't your ideal wind. Throw in a launch pad with mild offset. Uh, it's a recipe for disaster, actually, but Let's see if I can just play a nice little low bullet down there. We've got plenty of technology in the Evenflow Project X shaft to let us do that. I know where the kick point should be. Ball back in the stands. If this hits the fairway, then I'm going to say this is the best three wood for most people around the world. <laughs> How good is that? I can't believe I've just that was a little buttery fade down there. Guys, I have absolutely loved testing this three wood can't believe I'm going to put that back on screen because that was incredible. <laughs> How good is that? So I tested this Wilson launch pad fairway wood at the driving range on Trackman range and I must say the numbers were quite interesting. I really enjoyed the feel of it. It felt fine. Unfortunately, you can see a couple of them did sneak left because of that offset, but a ball speed at 151 and a carry of 249 really isn't a bad number for a club that's costing probably half the price of an expensive fairway wood. 